Good day, student. I hope all is well with each one of you. It has been some time now. Um, we have been looking at other areas of literature. A lot of tests that we have looked at. But today, we are going to take a trip through the castle of Otranto. Um, written by Boris Walpole. And by the end of this class, you will be able to read and understand the text. You will also be able to read, to know the various characters that you meet in the text. And finally, you will be able to examine the char uh, characteristics and the role of the characters that we meet in the test. Uh, because of time, we cannot look at the whole book. And so for this class, we are going to look at the uh, test chapter by chapter for us to know what transpires in each of them. For that, we will first so for all, look at the summary of the test. Since uh, for some time now we've not been meeting, uh, some of you might have forgotten about the test or the story itself. So this is supposed to uh, refresh your memory on what we have already read and as far as the test is concerned. So this is the summary of chapter one of the test. Let's see what goes on there. So the chapter one of the castle of Otranto opens with a fixed wedding ceremony between Prince Manfred's frail and sickly son of 15 years, Conrad, and Isabella, the daughter of Margis of Vicenza. This wedding could not come off since Conrad, the bridegroom, is found missing during the ceremony, even though the officiating priests were present. The servants of Manfred later found out that Conrad, the bridegroom, and the young prince had been crushed and his body mutilated by an ominous cask, a hamlet. This leaves everybody at the court horrified. Hippolyta the young prince's mother is conveyed to her chamber after fainting from apprehension, attended by Matilda, the princess, and Isabella. A young peasant named Theodore observes that the miraculous helmet was exactly like that on the figure in black marvel of Alfonso the Good, one of their former princes in the church of St. Nicholas. This annoys Manfred so much, and so he orders his servants to lock the young peasant up and deny him a fault. Later, Prince Manfred sends for Isabella and proposes to her but she refuses because she sees Hippolyta as her mother and sees such a move as ungodly and eventually flees from Manfred, who orders a servant to lock the castle down to prevent her escape. Isabella finds a secret passage in the castle that leads to the church of St. Nicholas. She miraculously meets the young peasant at the vault who helps her to escape to the church of St. Nicholas. The young peasant is arrested by Manfred and his servant who have never given up in their search for Isabella. Now, that is what transpires in the chapter one of Castle of Otranto. Now, um, when it comes to literature, we just cannot read the text for reading's sake. 
any question that one needs to answer, one needs to know the general theme of the test. In the examination, for instance, when you are asked to answer any question from any test, you will be expected to state the theme, I mean the general theme of that particular test. And for that matter, we are going to look at the theme of the Castle of Otranto. And the theme for our test is righteousness triumphs over evil. Now that we've been able to know the theme of the test, our main focus here is to look at what is a character. Because um, writers or authors create their own world. And as they create their own world, they as well people their own world. And so for that matter, we're going to look at what is a character. And that is defined as a character is a personality in the writer's fictional world. I've already told you that once a writer creates a world, he has to people the world, fill his world with people. And so personality in his world is what we refer to as a character. Now let us quickly look at the characters that we meet in chapter one of the test. Now there are a lot of characters that one meets after reading chapter one of the test. And these characters are Prince Manfred. He is the Lord of Otranto. Of course, we also meet Conrad, Prince Manfred's sickly son. We got to know that from the test. And there is also the young peasant, later, will be known in the test as Theodore. Then there is also Lady Hippolyta, Manfred's long suffering wife. We also meet Matilda who is the daughter of Manfred and Hippolyta. Then there is Isabella, who is also the daughter of Marquis of Vicenza. And of course, we also meet Jackis and Diego, who are servants in the castle working for Prince Manfred. Yes, these are the characters or the people we meet in the chapter one of the test. Now, our focus now is to try as much as possible to know how these characters are presented by our writer, Walpole, in the test. And so for that matter, we're going to look at characterization. What is it? This refers to the formal techniques of information transmission that are used to present the literal figures in a work of art. Yes, every writer, every author has a way of presenting his people, his character in a given test. And so we're going to look at how characters are presented. And so for that matter, we will quickly look at how a character in a given test can be assessed. But there are a lot of ways through which a character can be assessed in a test. But there are a few that we can look at in this le uh, lesson. One, we are saying that a character in a test can be assessed based upon who he or she is. Now, um, when we read a test, we are not just reading the test for reading sake. We must be able to know who the characters are. Right from the beginning of the test, we are told that Conrad was sickly and frail. 
we also got to know that Conrad was the son of Prince Manfred. Of course, he's also the uh, child or son of Hippolyta. That is what he is. If you look at other characters, of course, somebody like uh, Isabella, we are told that she is the daughter of um, Marquis of Vicenza. So that is who they are. We are as well saying that a character can be assessed based upon what he or she does. So in the course of reading the text, whatever a character does, it is up to us to pick it as one of his features or her features. Now, if we read chapter one of the text thoroughly, we realize that uh, at a point in time, after the death of Conrad, Prince Manfred invited Isabella and proposed to her. Now, for Manfred to propose to somebody who is supposed to get married to his own son, what kind of a person is he? That attitude, that character of his, we have to pick it God. That is what he is doing. We are as well saying that the character can also be assessed based upon what he or she says in the test. So in reading any test, should a particular character tells you that I'm very wicked, try me and you see. Immediately, as readers, as students of literature, we pick it as his or her characteristics. But in all these that we are saying, one has to back whatever he or she says with textual evidence. That is, we might be able to support whatever we say with evidence from the very text we have read. Of course, a character can also be assessed based upon what other characters in the text say about him or her. If we keep on reading the various chapters, we will get to know that, uh, yes, we will come to a point in time where other characters may be talking about other characters in the text. So at the end of the day, uh, we even find out that at a point in time, Manfred was criticized by the wife, Hippolyta, uh, 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 all because Prince Manfred, after um, not succeeding in uh, proposing to Isabella, goes straight to the wife to tell the wife that she's going, uh, he was going to divorce her. Now, in chapter 2, you find that uh, Hippolyta went to Father Jeremy to complain about this and tells us what the husband was doing or wants to do. So immediately we have to pick it. Then we are also saying that a character can also be um, assessed based upon his appearance or her appearance or how the writer presents him or her. But in the beginning of the text, we have already read, Conrad was presented by the writer as sickly and frail. That is how Conrad was presented to us by our author. If I should digress a little bit, if you should read the marriage of Anansua, right from the beginning of the text, Kwekwa Nancy, who is the main character of the text, was presented as wearing an oversized and tattered coat. Now, if you see somebody wearing an oversized coat which is tattered, what comes to our mind? Immediately we draw the line that that person may be poor. Yes, that was an appearance. That is how, or that is what the writer wants us to know in as far as, in as, far as that particular character is concerned. 
is for. And of course, we also have evidence in chapter 1, and as far as um, Conrad is concerned. Then finally, the reader also has a role to play. Literature has always been subjective. It is never objective. Which means that whatever we read must be able to draw a line. So for that matter, readers or you as my student after reading the text must be able to also assess a character. How you see a particular character. Do you see a particular character after reading the text as temperamental, as weak, as wicked, and so forth, and so forth. And of course, yes, after reading chapter one, we can come out boldly to say that Prince Manfred is very temperamental. Why? Because that is the line, conclusion or line we, we draw after reading the text. If somebody should ask you to give him or her some of the characteristics of a Prince Manfred, this you'll be able to witness. Yes, of course, you've been able to look at how characters are analyzed. Now, that alone is not enough because always characteristics or features of a character always goes with what we refer to as role. And so, most often, these two um, go together in questions. So then, what is a role of a character? But each and every one of you has a role to play. In our various houses, you have roles to play. At school, you have roles to play. So we're saying that a role can be referred to as the duty of a character. We are as well also saying that the role of a character can be a recurrent characteristic of that particular character. What is recurrent characteristics. When we say a characteristic is recurrent, it means it is something that keeps on happening. It occurs now and then, again and again. Right. So if you should even go to the test, chapter one, you realize that if you study Prince Manfred carefully, you realize that uh, uh, we don't see him to be very temperamental only at a point. At various occasions, we see him to be very temperamental. And indeed, that is true. That is the role that has been given to him to play. Now, all of you, my students, back in your hopes, you play roles. All of you, you are sons or children of your parents. And that characteristic of you keeps on recurring. Unless maybe one day you get up to tell your parents that uh, uh, I'm not your child, which you know will be very suicidal. You can't try that. So that is the role. Anything that, you, that keeps on going in a character's life becomes a role. So simply put, we are saying that it is a duty or a recurrent characteristic. Of course, we have looked at how a character can be assessed. We have also looked at role. Now at this point, uh, we have few work to do. One of the assignments or the exercise I want you to look at or go and do is one. Read chapter one of the Castle of Otranto. It is very, very important that we take our time to read the chapter. Because in our next class, we need 
this for discussion. Two, I will be very happy if you examine the character and role of Prince Manfred in chapter one of the test for discussion in our next class. As of course, already we have looked at the summary of chapter one of the test. We also looked at the theme of the test. We as well considered what is a character. And we also looked at the characters that we meet in chapter one. Then we also considered characterization. That is uh, how characters, uh, 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 authors present their characters. Then we also touched on the analysis of these characters. That is how a character can be assessed after reading the test. Should you be asked to discuss the character of a particular character, or should you be asked to discuss how a very a particular character is portrayed in the test, that is what we expect you to do. And finally, we also looked at the role of a character in the test. Now, all too soon, we've come to the end of our lesson today. Stay safe and do the assignment for our next class. Thank you. It has been Sir Tony, your literature master. Amen. <laughs>